Uh, io vado a presentare il primo speaker che, come dicevi tu, è uh, Elaine Eleli, giusto? L'ho pronunciato, pronunciato giusto. Uh, mi hanno detto, è, è una pronuncia francese, io il francese non lo so, quindi. Uh, Elaine è un, um, un Principal Solution Engineer at GitHub. Uh, abbiamo chiesto un talk a, a, a GitHub e siamo contentissimi di averlo. Purtroppo per un, un imprevisto uh, Elaine non è qui oggi, quindi... Ci ha registrato un talk, ciò non toglie che però uh, per supportarci diciamo, con domande e curiosità uh, chiediamo un suo diciamo, non strettissimo collega perché uh, sappiamo che GitHub è di Microsoft, ma c'è una persona di Microsoft qui con noi che è Marco D'Angelo che eh, tra l'altro mi diceva che è già collegato e sta guardando uh, la uh, chat di uh, YouTube, quindi se volete... Eh, mettere da parte qualche domanda poi a fine mattinata possiamo chiacchierare con lui anche di GitHub quindi io direi eh, che siamo pronti per partire entrare nel vivo delle tecnicalità della conferenza per cui Principal Solutions Engineer at GitHub, Daniel Eli, Fast and Reliable DevOps with GitHub è il titolo del talk e Cesco dalla regia vai, grazie Hello, welcome today. Uh, my name is Alain Elaidi and I work for GitHub. And today I'm going to uh, present to you how to create fast and reliable software with GitHub. Um, today we're going to go through a couple of slides very quickly. Uh, and then I'm going to go through a live demo where we're going to see uh, GitHub's uh, new shiny features such as CodeQL, Cut spaces and GitHub actions. Um, so, but before that, uh, let's uh, remind ourselves what GitHub is about. So, and as Satya Nadella said it, uh, GitHub is more than a platform, GitHub is more than software, GitHub is a way of life. And it's a way of life that uh, 51 million people on the planet are enjoying today. Uh, that's the number of users on GitHub at the moment. And uh, these users are spread across all kinds of organization of uh, companies or communities or ecosystems. Uh, on GitHub, you can find the most innovative companies, but also top open source projects uh, and uh, traditional companies as well, you know, like Walmart, HSBC, uh, American Airlines. Uh, these companies are creating software on GitHub as well. Uh, and that's interesting. I think that's very interesting to see such a variety of companies gathering around GitHub to create their software. And the reason why they are gathering around GitHub to create software is because as software has dramatically changed during the past years, we also need to change the way uh, not only we're creating that software, but also the way that developers are working on a day-to-day basis. So uh, everybody is now used to that term, cloud native applications. Uh, but that has implications on how your developers should work on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and that's why I like to call to 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 um to use the term GitHub native developers. You know, nowadays your software is made of open source, mainly like 80 to 90 percent of your software is uh, uh an, an assembly of uh open source frameworks and components. And so you need to know how to be in that ecosystem. And at the same time, you need to accelerate, you know, you need to, to be able to have more agility, you need to be able to uh, deliver faster, deliver on more type of platforms, deliver on a variety of platforms, you know, containers and functions over multiple clouds, YAS and PaaS. So the automation side of things is, is vastly uh, larger than what we used to uh, deal with, but also that acceleration should not be a reason to forget security. And security is dramatically more complicated than what it used to be because we are obviously exposing our application over the internet on public clouds um, and, and using frameworks from people we don't have, a, uh, we have never met to begin with. So uh, the way we deal with security is also very uh, much more complex than what we used to have. So that's the kind of challenges that we want uh, to, to look at. 
Um, so with GitHub, what we're going to do uh, is to look at three main pillars, basically. How do we increase productivity? How do we manage talent? How, so how do we attract new developers, but also how do we make sure that they work on the right, uh, on the right things? And last is how do we uh, improve security and compliance in order to make sure that uh, the faster developer, uh, the faster software we're delivering is also more secure than what it used to be. And that uh, we can do it on three different platforms. So there are three different flavors of GitHub nowadays. So everybody knows about GitHub Enterprise uh, Cloud. So the, the SaaS version of things that, are, that can be targeted to enterprise, but also you could have a GitHub Enterprise Server on your premises or in your public cloud, in your VPC, but also we could have a managed instance of that GitHub Enterprise Server for you. Then it's called GitHub Enterprise Private Instance. So three different flavors, uh, depending on your constraints, we can deliver uh, the, the, the three different um, aspects of that. Things. Okay, so let's move to uh, live demo now, and I'm going to go to my brother. Oh, let's switch. Uh, there we go. So I have this. Uh, very shiny repository that doesn't do much, but that's not a problem. Uh, we want to start developing on that. And developing on a brand new repository or having somebody new in our team, uh, being able to contribute quickly to a project is, is always a challenge. You need, you need to onboard people. You need to make sure that they're, they're Laptop is configured properly. There are all the software needed to uh, not only edit the code but also compile and and test locally. Um, so that's that's always uh, a, a challenge. So that's why we create code spaces. So with code spaces, I can start with uh, a repository and open that code space, and that will trigger for me a brand new environment uh, based on Visual Studio Code. And uh, it will provide me um, with the same experience that you have with Visual Studio Code uh, on, your, on your machine. So you can uh, see the files, uh, you can edit them, uh, but also you get access to a terminal and a, a debug environment at the same time. So let's, let's look at how it works. I'm going to uh, create a new branch. So it will be in test uh, local host. Create that new branch, and uh, with that branch, I'm going to uh, change this file over there. Uh, this is an enable page for uh, local host, and let's put some exclamation marks. So we're happy with that. All right, so I've made a change in my project. Uh, now I want to test that. So let's go in my terminal that I've right here, and I can just say npm run serve, and there you go. I don't have to install any software. Everything is running uh, in a container that is configured here in my .dev container uh, folder that's committed my repository, so it is shared with the rest of my team. Uh, the npm run serve uh, trigger, and I can just click on that localhost 8080 and it will automatically direct me to that container that's running somewhere and if I'm clicking to the about page I'm seeing that my change has been uh, executed and that's pretty cool. So uh, within a couple of click uh, I've been able to do a full edit of my project and run that project because all the software required to run that project was packaged in that container um, no need to install anything on my machine. It's uh, just magical, basically. All right, so we're happy. We have that uh, thing running locally on our machine. Now, uh, let's look at what it, you know, what it takes to take that software that was running somewhere uh, on the cloud to uh, some software that's running in my cloud, like where I want to have my test test application and, and uh, you know, QA application, uh, maybe production application as well. And for that, I'm going to use uh, GitHub Actions. So um, let's actually commit uh, this, uh, 
thing uh, that we've changed. So uh, we want to say this is a new test for localhost and commit that. And then we're going to push that upstream. Uh, and while we're here, let's you know create a pull request. So we want to create that pull request over there. Um, request is created. We're going to use our last commit message to generate that pull request. And there we go. We have a pull request that's been created. Uh, let's go and check it out. So we're going to go back to the you know, traditional uh, GitHub environment where we have that pull request. We're going to see that uh, that's uh, really that change that we created that we're looking at. Um, and uh, what we see is we have a um, couple of things being executed at the moment. Um, if we look at what's going on here, so these, uh, these uh, checks that are uh, being executed here, we can see that uh, we have some pipelines, that some GitHub Actions pipelines being executed at the moment. So uh, we have a bunch of things going on here. And if we look at uh, the code that we are looking at right now, let me open that in a new tag. Um, there you go. Uh, so we can look at the workflows we are executing. And it's it's uh, the build branch.tml one that we are executing basically whenever a branch that's not master is being executed, uh, unless uh, the change is happening in .github slash workflow, because I don't want to hear a workflow whenever we are modifying a workflow. Uh, and what we're doing here is basically doing a build matrix. Build matrix allows me to uh, compile my, my project over two different versions of Node.js. Maybe I need to support both at the same time. So uh, every time I'm pushing some code over there, I'm going to execute two workflow, the same ones, but with different versions of Node.js. And I'm going to do a bunch of things. I mean, running, if you see uh, the uh, NPM install, NPM run, NPM test unit. I'm going to use Cypress as well to do some end-to-end -end testing on my uh, on my project and uh, that generates some videos and some screenshots that I'm going to attach to my pipeline. So if we are going back to our pipelines, uh, hopefully they have finished executing now, almost. Our Cypress is running at the moment, so let's give it a little bit of time. All right, we are now finished. Um, all our pipelines have been executed. And if we are going back to this uh, overall workflow execution, we have some videos that have been taken by Cypress. They are attached to our pipelines. We could have a look at them if we want to, but as everything went fine, uh, we're not going to spend much time on that. So um, going back to our pull request, uh, we know now uh, that uh, everything compiles properly. So what about deploying that? What about deploying that to our public cloud? So uh, I have a little automation to do that for me. Uh, I'm just going to uh, go over there, add a label that's called deploy to test. And this label uh, triggers basically a bot. I mean, I have a bot listening to that label and that's called the deploy bot. And the deploy bot is now going to ask for a deployment. And as we can see, uh, this branch is being deployed to what we call a review app. So it's, a, it's an app that's just being provided to me or provisioned to me by this integration whenever I need, I need it. Basically. And I don't need to know anything about it. It's just being triggered by another pipeline, basically. And if we look at that pipeline, it's uh, executed here and it's doing a couple of things. It's uh, uh, building a and publishing a container into a GitHub package registry and creating an app in Azure for me and doing all that stuff uh, as, as soon as I put that label uh, on, on my pull request. Let's have a look quickly at what this pipeline looks like. Uh, again, going to .github slash workflows and I have a deploy test pipeline and that's basically what we're doing here. So uh, I'm using the GitHub API to update the deployment status. And then I'm building my Docker container. Then I'm pushing that uh, basically to my, uh, to my uh, Docker uh, registry that's on github.com for that repository. Going to Azure uh, with that login and then creating the web app 
publishing publishing things. I mean, it's a traditional uh, traditional uh, Docker things on on Azure basically. So eventually, uh, we'll be able to see uh, that uh, a new package has been deployed uh, for my repository. So it's going to happen maybe now, maybe. Uh, yeah, not yet, because the previous one was one hour ago, so it's going to happen in a couple of seconds now. But eventually, uh, we're going to see all these things uh, finished. Oh, we're almost there now. Uh, the review app has been created on Azure because things are happening in parallel. So I'm still building that Docker image, so let's give it a couple of seconds. It took a total of two minutes and 23 seconds, but our pipeline is now finished. Uh, I mean, almost. We still have one more step. Uh, now we're deploying the container to the, uh, to the app on Azure. Uh, so the app was created, the container was published, and now we are matching the two together. All good, we finished. Um, so let's go back to our pull request now. Um, and what we're going to see here is, yeah, my branch was successfully deployed. I have one active deployment. And if we look at that, we can just click here, view deployment. And again, if we check that here, yes, we are deployed uh, on an Azure, Azure website. So all good. Uh, we have been able to deploy to uh, to, to Azure in a uh, in couple, couple of clicks. So um, we've seen how to uh, deploy through code spaces to our uh, you know, cloud-based development environment. We've been able to see through GitHub action, actions how to deploy to our pre-production environment, or it could be the same for the production environment. And actually, if I'm merging my pull request right now, it's going to push on master. And, and do a similar deployment to uh, my production environment. Uh, but now let's look at, you know, what do we miss from a security point of view here? Um, we have that security tab over there. That's going to show me a bunch of things. First of all, I will be able to see my dependabots alerts. My dependabots alerts are all about the dependencies that I'm using. And as you can see, I have two alerts over there. Uh, there are moderate severities, but still I might want to look at that. And that's telling me basically that some of my um, dependencies have uh, security issues. So this one, for instance, where I'm using uh, um, some older version of WebSocket needs to be updated to a newer version, basically. So I need to move to version .0 .1 .4. Um, and uh, um, actually, um, I um, Dependabot created the pull request for me to do that. So um, I didn't have to create the code to say, okay, I want to move from 0 .3, 0 0.1.3 to 0 0.1.4. Uh, I'm just going to uh, let Dependabot do that for me. And Dependabot did that. Uh, basically, it went to my package.json file. Uh, and you know, change that version number here to uh, 0.1.4 when I was running 0 0.1.3, okay? So that's cool. Uh, I just had to merge a pull request and actually I was not very good at that. I, I forgot to merge it and some of the bot decided to close that for me. Uh, but I can I can still go back on that and, and change it later. It's not a problem. Uh, it's, been, it's been created for me. So I just need to act on that uh, eventually. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the code scanning out. So the code scanning out is now on the code I am creating. So not the code I'm leveraging, but the code I'm creating myself. Um, and uh, I have several code scanning systems here. Uh, one is shift left, uh, but shift left didn't find anything on my project, but my project is very, uh, very uh, 
simple, so not too many things to tell. Um, I'm using also Anchor Container Vulnerability Reports, uh, which tell me everything about the Docker container that I'm using to deploy my application. And as you can see, I got a bunch of things that I need to work on. Uh, but that's cool. Uh, I can I can have a look at that later. Uh, but the other thing that's uh, interesting is uh, CodeQL. So CodeQL is a brand new technology that we have that's inspecting your code, looking at pr uh, problems in, in your source code itself. Um, CodeQL is very interesting. So QL stands for obviously query language. And, and we like to do the analogy with SQL. So SQL is to query data in a database in a form that's more expressive and more intelligent than just doing regex in text file, for instance. So we all understand that. We can have where and uh, group by and you know all that kind of clauses in a, in a SQL statement that provides us the right information uh, and, and you can change the data, but still that query will look at the, uh, the, 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 the interesting aspects of the data that you want to retrieve. And it's the same thing with CodeQL. So we treat, with CodeQL, we treat the code as if it was data and we can query that data in a more expressive way than what you could use, what, what you could do traditionally. Um, so for instance, here I got a problem in my code where I'm not uh, you know, checking the suffix in the in right way. So I'm just, uh, you know, uh, getting a parameter and just using that without making any checks at all. Um, and so CodeQL is catching that in my code and it, it's, it's about to tell me, you know, uh, why I have a problem, what's the recommendation, how should I treat that and, and, and so forth. Um, and that's cool. Uh, and, and this view here is about you know what I have on my master branch. But obviously, if I was just putting that code in a brand new pull request, CodeQL would tell me right away about that. So preventing me from committing that code into my project to begin with. So that's a great value for me. Um, all right. So if we tie things together, it just happens so that this information um, is nothing more than something that's coming from my code scanning actions. So that's uh, that's a, the cool thing is uh, this uh, GitHub Actions thing is also what I'm using to uh, you know do my analysis, for instance. So if we look at things here, uh, the code QL, uh, the code QL result is coming directly from a GitHub Action pipeline, and so I can reintegrate that uh, the technology in the best possible way for my project. So there are many ways to do that, uh, that, that integration, uh, but it's up to me to design the workflow that will do my end-to-end -end test. So I could put that in, in another pipeline or like the same pipelines that I'm using to build my application, or I could do that in a separate one at the same time. So it's up to me. All right. So. Uh, we saw code spaces, uh, we saw some GitHub actions, we saw some code QL all together in one single project. Um, the idea uh, really is to be able to go fast and reliable uh, to deliver software uh, for, for today's world. All right, so we saw uh, code spaces that provides you uh, a flexible environment. Uh, with a container, so all your developers can get up and started in a matter of clicks and not in a matter of days. And they can contribute, they can uh, edit some code, they can test and run some code in that cloud-based environment. So no need to install anything on the machine. We saw um, GitHub Actions, so we, could, we were able to create pipelines to build and test and deploy your code in an easy way. Uh, without any uh, you know requirement from from the user point of view to deploy some code in the cloud, and we saw CodeQL and all the GitHub Advanced Security um, security features that allows you to create some reliable software, whether uh, it is about your dependencies but also your own code and making sure you don't create new vulnerabilities. All that can be used in the cloud, it can be used in a self hosted way, or it can be used in that sort of hybrid settings where GitHub is managing for you a GitHub Enterprise Server instance. Um, wrapping up, um, 
if you want to look at things, we're more happy to help you. Um, we have that report on our website uh, that's called the Total Economic Impact of GitHub Enterprise. I, I'm really encouraging you to have a look at that. Uh, you see how to uh, reduce developer and borrowing time by 40%. Um, a great return on investment and see uh, how you can save minutes uh, per developer per day. I mean, huge savings over there uh, that are valuable for, for your developers. There is a great report and you can play with the numbers. You can, you can uh, estimate based on your workflow what you could be uh, saving uh, over there. So, with that, uh, thank you for attending um, and uh, I hope to see you quickly on GitHub. Bye.